Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my older drawing of Keanu Reeves as John Wick and I did a time lapse for this a while back but some people requested a longer narrated video where I should talk a little bit more about my tools and techniques so let's get to it. The sketch is normally done with a graphite pencil and as for the composition it was a little bit difficult for me to decide on whether I should focus on the face or whether I should do a drawing of the full figure. Eventually I decided to do something in between. You can see my reference photo in the top left corner and it is cropped. Uh, more of the figure was visible in it but I decided to do something in between because I wanted both to capture his face and also to capture a little bit of his clothes and the tie flying to the side I thought that would be cool so anyway I'm starting to work on the hair and I did that with a medium charcoal pencil and I'm using Warrison charcoal pencils these are woodless charcoal pencils and the important thing to remember when drawing hair especially a slicked uh, hair like this is to make sure that you pull your strokes in the direction in which the hair grows and that way once I start blending it uh, some of these lines will still be visible but I, the, the texture will match uh, what the hair is actually supposed to look like. Now for the beard which I started working on a little bit I use much shorter strokes. Now here I did something a little bit unusual for me. I moved on to drawing his clothes uh, before I actually did a little bit more work on the face. And normally I don't do that but here I wanted to do a little bit more of this jacket on the left. And some people asked how I managed to make the jacket look smooth. I avoid uh, doing it with a pencil. Instead I used um, charcoal powder created by sharpening my pencil and I spread that around with a brush and later I just refined some of the details with a black colored pencil. The black colored pencil that I'm using is a Primo black colored pencil but you can use any one because it doesn't really uh, matter. Uh, so again uh, I'm using my woodless charcoal pencils and now I'm working on the facial features. My approach as usual is to draw in some of the darker areas and then work around them by spreading the charcoal around either with my brushes or with tutilians. Uh, when I use tutilians, I use them as drawing tools when there's a little bit of charcoal on them I can use them to pull some of the softer uh, facial features uh, where I don't need as much contrast and where I don't, don't need uh, very clean uh, sharp lines. Um, in addition to the brushes and the, blend and the other blending tools for shading, I also use a black colored pencil for shading the face and I use it on top of the charcoal. I use a tapered stroke and cross hatching where I build up the amount of value gradually. Now here in some of the darker areas of the hair I also use the soft charcoal pencil uh, to get a little bit more depth uh, because uh, those soft charcoal pencils uh, just are just a little bit darker than the medium ones and that way some of these uh, darkest, uh, darkest parts of the hair which are getting least light uh, will appear a lot darker and almost completely black and I uh, refined the texture and the appearance of the hair a little bit more by going over it with a black colored pencil and later I may use a pencil eraser to pull some highlights to give that hair a little bit more shape and uh, volume. And as you can see here I did a lot more work on the left side of the face or his right side of the face where I even started working a little bit on the beard and the mustache. This part is going to be very detailed because I need to do a lot of these tiny strokes and this is not a very large drawing this paper is about 9 times 12 inches in size so uh, one of the challenges when working on a smaller portrait like this one and this is a smaller portrait is uh, that it's 
it can be a little bit difficult to create to achieve likeness uh, when you're working on a slightly smaller face but then again larger portraits carry challenges of their own now at this moment if it appears that the face is a little bit too dark like he has a little bit too much tan uh, that's because I did most of the shading on the face and I uh, didn't go over uh, some some of the some other parts like eyebrows and the eyes and the mustache and when I make those darker uh, the the complexion will actually appear a little bit lighter and that goes for the lips as well uh, now here on the shirt as you can see I try to create a texture that is a little bit more rough than the co uh, than the jacket and now as you can see I'm doing a little bit more shading on the face and adding a little more value to the hair and the beard and the mustache and as I add a little more value to some of these darker areas on the face uh, the the face the complexion will, will start to appear lighter and lighter because that's the way it is with shading everything is relative and an area appears as dark or as light as the area next to it uh, he has a lot of these uh, small scars and scratches on the face which I also want to capture and kind of a grim but uh, peaceful expression so here I'm doing a little bit more work on the beard and just trying to refine its texture a little bit more the face is going pretty well and that's probably the most challenging bit about this drawing but like I said about my composition this is pretty much what I wanted I didn't want to do a larger portrait because I figured I would do that at some other time and recently I did a larger portrait of John Wick and I'm going to put the link in the description and in the end screen if you want to check that out as well uh, this one is an even longer uh, narrated video where you can see a little bit more and hear a little bit more about my techniques and, um, and my uh, approach to drawing larger portraits because th that portrait is quite a bit more detailed than this one and if you want to see a full-length real-time narrated version of that video you can also check out my patreon where I have lots of uh, lots of additional content and lots of real-time videos many of which are narrated uh, here as you can see I'm starting to work a little bit more on the shirt and this tie and like I said I try to achieve a slightly uh, more rough texture on the shirt I wanted to kind of show that it's made of a slightly different material but in order to, to achieve a smoother texture on the jacket like I said I mostly used charcoal powder and I spread that charcoal powder around I never buy charcoal powder, powder I just create it by sharpening by the way as you can see on the hair on the top of his head I pulled a few highlights to make uh, those lighter bits stand out a little bit more so like I said I never buy uh, my own charcoal powder I just create it by sharpening and I know it's not as good but it gets the job done and it, if, I f if I feel like some of it is a little bit too rough like it needs some additional blending I can either use my blending tools or go over it with white charcoal or chalk which will blend it even more so I'm trying to make this area here um, around the collar a little bit darker uh, because obviously it's uh, getting less light because the jacket is covering it and now moving on to the right side of the jacket I'm pretty much done with the face I'm not going to be fidgeting much with it I'll just maybe do some finishing touches a little bit later uh, but the rest of this will be pretty straightforward not much else to do just add a few details to the jacket but the only complicated bit 
will be this tie which is kind of flying to the side which is one of the things that uh, drew me to this reference photo and um, I, w when I start shading this tie I'm gonna have to keep in mind uh, where my light source is and as usual regardless of whether the light source is coming from one side or the other uh, the, the light is mostly coming from above in most cases so I'm gonna ha have to shade the top side of the tie to, to make it a little bit lighter and then the the side of the tie which is facing downward I'm gonna make that darker and a few more words about uh, the shading I did, did on the face the lighting on the face is a little bit complex because we have a lot of reflected light coming from uh, from behind, from from the sides. Uh, that's why uh, the middle part of the face and slightly to the left is a little bit darker and then we have a lighter part all the way to the left where there is probably some reflected light coming from the other side. So now I'm uh, finishing the shading on this tie and I'm trying to smooth it out using my tutillion. These tutillions are homemade. I rolled them myself. Uh, if you like you can check that video out as well. They are very useful tools and easy to make. So here as you can see I'm mostly done with the drawing and I'm just putting down some finishing touches, touches mo mostly using my soft charcoal pencil just to put in some of these darkest areas just to uh, give the drawing a little bit more depth and a little bit more volume. I like to put down these uh, finishing touches where I just uh, reinforce these darkest areas in the drawing. Um, and I'm just gonna do a little bit more work on the hair and all I have left to do is to sign the drawing. So there it is, that was my first drawing of Keanu Reeves as John Wick. Like I said, you can also check out my uh, second one which is a larger portrait and I also have a large portrait of Keanu Reeves as Neo, you should check that out as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.